Today, investor Chamath Palihapitiya declares the death of crypto in the U.S. Coinbase sues the SEC to force the agency to clarify its crypto regulations, and Wisdom Tree's CEO explains how the firm wants to bridge the gap between TradFi and DeFi. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Jordan Smith. Digital currency is trading relatively flat this morning after that sell-off in recent days. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin hovered right around $27,000. Ether traded around $1,800, and Chainlink fell to $7. All right, let's talk about the top stories. First, tech investor Chamath Palihapitiya is declaring the end of crypto, at least here in the States. Just two years after proclaiming that Bitcoin would replace gold, Chamath took to the All In podcast to say that the cryptocurrency was, quote, dead in America. He placed the blame on regulators and the renewed regulatory crackdown and said crypto companies like Coinbase were the ones most threatening the establishment. And speaking of Coinbase, the crypto exchange just filed a new lawsuit against the SEC. Coinbase asked that the regulator be forced to answer a petition from back in July of last year, in which Coinbase asked the SEC whether it would allow the industry to be regulated by existing frameworks. In that petition, Coinbase asked the SEC to propose and adopt rules to govern the regulation of securities that are offered and traded via digitally native methods. Coinbase has been gearing up for a legal battle with the SEC, and CEO Brian Armstrong just recently told CNBC that he expected the company to head to court over the regulator's rulemaking. Last up, bankrupt crypto firm Genesis is asking for a mediator after a group of creditors backed out of its restructuring plan. In a tweet this morning, parent company DCG announced it was looking for mediation after some of Genesis Capital's creditors, quote, reneged on the deal set up more than two months ago. The company also claimed the creditors had limited engagement since the deal was announced in February. Under the restructuring plan, creditors expected to get around 80% of their funds back. Reuters reported back in January that Genesis owed creditors at least $3.5 billion. All right, on to our main story. Consensus 2023 kicks off tomorrow, and all kinds of big names from crypto and TradFi are heading to the convention in Austin, Texas, to discuss the future of the technology. And it's happening with the backdrop of last year's meltdown and this year's regulatory pressure. Ahead of the event, I spoke to one of the attendees, Jonathan Steinberg, the CEO of Wisdom Tree, about how TradFi is working to bridge the gap with crypto despite the headwinds. Wisdom Tree is heading to Consensus 2023 this year. Walk me through why you're heading down to Austin, Texas to talk about digital assets and what sorts of big issues are you focusing on and, and facing TradFi in their attempts to expand to digital assets? Uh, well, one, Wisdom Tree has a big group going down to Consensus, and it's a great opportunity to um, meet with a lot of people interested in the concept or the, you know, digital assets broadly. Um, so there's a lot of business development opportunity. Um, we're happy to be, you know, um, get the opportunity to further share what we're doing on digital assets. You know, for us, digital assets is sort of the overarching umbrella that includes cryptocurrencies as an asset class, um, tokenization, which we're trying to really be a leader in. We think that's the wrapper of the future. And then blockchain enabled financial, uh, uh, blockchain enabled financial services, which we think with tokenization really, um, will enhance the user experience and create, um, innovations that you just can't do on the old rail. So, you know, we're playing for the long game and we're very excited where we're positioned in this, you know, quickly emerging, uh, new platform. Yeah. I mean, let's let's talk about Wisdom Tree Prime. Uh, it is, I think, your next foray into the digital asset space. It's supposed to launch in Q2. There's a wait list right now. Uh, what made you decide to launch a wallet? And, and how does that fit into those avenues that you were just talking about between digital assets, tokenization and the like uh, in the digital asset space? Um, you know, um, first, what we're doing is so natural for Wisdom Tree. Right now, Wisdom Tree, you know, we're an asset manager. We manage about 91 billion in ETFs. So ETFs are fully transparent, really does play into things like blockchain um, that, you know, really embrace transparency. Um, so, but we're so early in some sense, you know, we, uh, last year we got um, nine funds approved at the SEC, blockchain enabled funds. Now there just aren't venues to list tokenized securities at this moment anywhere other than our own wallet. But I'm thrilled to be launching our wallet in Q2. It's just another opportunity to um, 
not cannibalize, really additive in terms of a distribution platform. And it'll give us a different relationship, both direct to consumer as well as B2B. There are lots of innovations that are coming. But like you said, Wisdom Tree Prime in the App Store, in Q2, it'll be iterative. So we will be doing a lot more over the course of this year. And the, to, the, so I don't just judge us um, day one. There's a lot of regulatory issues and functionality issues that you just have to work through, which is a little bit different than like ETFs. When you launch an ETF, it's launched complete. But in technologies, it's a little bit different, but it's very exciting. Wisdom Tree has launched around 10 blockchain focused funds, which have gotten approval from the SEC. Um, given the current regulatory environment that we're in right now, has that affected your strategy toward digital assets at all? You, you mentioned that this is an iterative process for the wallet. What's your sort of thinking for regulation right now and how it's affecting Wisdom Tree? So, um, you know, when we really started this journey about four years ago, um, I knew that it wasn't about DeFi, not for regulated financial service companies. It was responsible DeFi. So you want some of the functionality benefits that come with DeFi, but you have to retain the foundational principles of regulated financial services, customer protections, anti-money laundering, know your customer. So we actually expected all this. Now that said, it's a tremendously intense environment with the regulators, but we're am amazingly uh, proud of what we were able to accomplish last year. And I think, you know, it's fair to say, you know, that the SEC views Wisdom Tree as very constructive in trying to bring some of these innovations to the market. Yeah. Um, I think there are sort of two competing themes happening right now um, in crypto that are brewing. Uh, on the one side, you have traditional finance, big banks saying that they're sort of dismissing crypto. They may not be dismissing blockchain technology altogether, but the, the digital currencies themselves don't really have a use case for their businesses. But then on the other side, you have crypto supporters who are looking what happened with regional banks in March and saying this is the exact use case for crypto. Mm -hmm. um, this is why it exists to uh, prevent some of the issues we saw with bank runs. But how do you sort of bridge the gap between those two parties? How do you how do you bring your peers in TradFi to be less skeptical? And how do you bring crypto mainstream? So uh, one in Wisdom Tree Prime will actually have a curated uh, crypto exposures, meaning Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we will do that and we'll do it in a way where we are um, managing your keys and managing the custody. And so um, that I think is mainstreaming it. You can't blame the banks. Going back to your question on regulation, um, the banks are amazingly discouraged from touching crypto, the asset class, and they just have a different regulatory regime. And at this moment, you just can't blame them. Um, on the other side, for retail itself, they have a little bit of flexibility. And this use case does, um, in some ways, was enhanced. The, the stress in the banks, you might want to keep some of it on the side here. But, you know, in some ways, that's like buying gold coins and burying them in your um, in your garden or something. I mean, it's not quite the, the functionality that you're looking for. When we launch Wisdom Tree Prime... Bitcoin with utility, eventually Bitcoin with peer-to-peer -peer exchange safely, as well as tied to your payment rails. So, we, I mean, what's what I think a lot of people, when you think about Bitcoin, it is a real beautiful use case on the blockchain. And what it does is it travels globally with very little friction. One of the things incumbent on a firm like Wisdom Tree is to tokenize traditional assets that can have the same kind of frictionless movement over geography with functionality like peer to peer tied to payment rails so that, you know, you're trying to get the best of both. This is, you know, so in, in, for Wisdom Tree, we seem very comfortable with the moment in time with regulation, it is consistent with our vision. I'm not saying that it hasn't been a journey and a slog, but we knew it would be, so we're comfortable with it.
All right, we're going to have a lot more from Consensus 2023. We'll be on the ground bringing you the latest from Robinhood, Google, and more. But that's all for Crypto World today. We'll be back again tomorrow, and we'll see you then.